Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is sound intensity and the decibel system. And we want to know what is the relationship between the intensity of sound and the distance from the source, and how does the decibel system work. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Waves are regarded as energy transport phenomenon. They transport energy from the vibrating source to the surrounding regions without transporting matter. As a source of sound begins vibrating, energy is introduced into the medium, and particles of the medium vibrate about a fixed position. The amplitude of a sound wave refers to the maximum amount of displacement that a particle experiences relative to its usual resting position. Here we see two animations of vibrating particles. On the left, you'll notice the particles are vibrating with large amplitude compared to the animation on the right. And you'll notice for the high amplitude vibrations that the particles are displaced further from their usual resting position. As a vibrating source of sound vibrates with high amounts of energy, particles of the medium vibrate with a large amplitude. Such a sound wave would, would transport a greater amount of energy than a low amplitude vibration and would be perceived as a loud sound. The intensity of a sound wave refers to the amount of sound energy that reaches a given surface area per unit of time. From this definition, we can write the equation for intensity as intensity equal energy divided by time divided by area. In physics, the ratio of energy per time is called the power, so I can rewrite this equation to be intensity equal power divided by area. The units of intensity would be units of power divided by units of area, the standard metric units being watts per meter squared. The power in this equation is a property of the source of sound. For instance, you could have high wattage speakers or low wattage speakers. The wattage is a property of the speakers. As the energy emitted by a vibrating source of sound is introduced into the medium, it begins to spread outwards from the source over a spherical surface area of radius r. The size of this sphere increases with time as the wave continues to travel outwards from the source. Because the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, I can rewrite my equation as intensity is equal to power p divided by area 4 pi r squared. One concept that this equation conveys is that the intensity of a sound wave is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. In other words, we could take the equation and rewrite it as a proportionality statement that reads i is proportional to 1 over r squared. To illustrate the concept, let's consider a source of sound, a speaker, that transmits energy into the medium that spreads over a spherical surface area that grows over the course of time. Let's consider four different spheres having radiuses of 1, 2, 3, and 4 meters. And let's pick a point on each of these spheres for discussion purposes, labeling them A, B, C, and D. I'm going to create a table to illustrate the so-called inverse square law. I'll list points A through D and the respective distance from the source. And we'll suppose that at location A, the intensity of sound is 160 generic units. Now at location B, twice as far from the speaker as location A is, the intensity should be less since intensity varies with this, varies inversely with the square of the distance. So since we're twice as far away, the intensity would be one-fourth as much. It would be 40, watt, 40 units at location B. This is the idea that as you double the radius r, you cause the intensity to be one-fourth the original value. Now let's select location C at 3 meters, three times further from the source of sound as A is from the source of sound. Because it's further from the source of sound, the intensity goes down, and it goes down by a factor of 3 squared. So 160 divided by 9 is 17.8 units. As you triple the distance from the source, you cause the intensity to decrease by a factor of 9. It becomes 1 ninth the original value. This is the so-called inverse square law. Let's 
let's do our last point, point D, which is four times further from the source as point A is from the source of sound. Being four times further from the source of sound, the intensity will go down by a factor of four squared. We'll take the 160 units from row A and divide it by four squared, or 16, and we'll get two 10 un units for the intensity of sound at location D. The idea, idea again is if you quadruple the distance R, you'll cause the intensity to decrease by a factor of 4 squared. It will be 1 16th the original value. Humans have an extraordinary large range of intensities that they can hear. Let's consider two particular intensities on opposite ends of this range. One of them is a so-called threshold of hearing, a sound that a few individuals within our population can hear that has an intensity of 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared. Now if we were to increase the intensity of that particular sound by 13 powers of 10, that is by 10 trillion, we would have the so-called threshold of pain, a, a, a sound that has an intensity of 1 times 10 to the positive 1 watts per meter squared. Now this is a rather large range with the higher intensity being 10 to the 13 times more intense than the lower intensity. Now in science whenever we have a large range of values for a given quantity we often use a so-called logarithmic scale to compare the various values within the range. We do this in geology with the Richter scale we do it in chemistry with the pH scale and we do it here in physics with with the so-called decibel scale. Let me try to communicate how it works. I'm going to begin by listing a table with several sources of sound in the respective intensity levels in watts per meter squared. You'll notice on the table that there's a row for the threshold of hearing at the top, and we also see the threshold of pain near the bottom. Now I'm going to add a column to this table, and the column is going to be the number of times more intense that each row is than the threshold of hearing. The decibel scale is based upon using the threshold of hearing as an index value for all the other decibel ratings. So I'm going to list that, that column here, and you'll notice I'm expressing the number of times more intense as a power of 10. Now I'm going to add two more columns. I'm going to add a column for the so-called bell rating and a column for the so-called decibel rating. Now the word decibel has a Greek prefix, deci, in front of bell. It serves the same purpose as the milli of milliliters, the centi of centimeters, and the kilo of kilograms. Deci means one-tenth of a bell. So if a decibel is one-tenth of a bell, the number of decibels you have will always be ten times the so-called bell rating. Now let's look at the first row. In the decibel scale, I assign the threshold of hearing as having a decibel rating and a bell rating of zero. So I'm going to list that there in the first row of the table. Now in the second row, the rustling leaves is 10 to the first times more intense than the threshold of hearing. And what I'm going to do is capture the exponent of 10. That becomes the bell rating. So rustling leaves has a bell rating of 1, and since a decibel is one-tenth of a bell, one bell equals equals 10 one-tenth bells. So the decibel rating is 10 for the second row. Now let's do the whisper in the third row. The whisper is 10 to the second times more intense than the threshold of hearing. So for the bell rating of a whisper, capture the exponent on 10, the 2, and that becomes the bell rating. Multiply by 10 to get the decibel rating. Now in the fourth row, normal conversation. That's 10 to the six times more intense than the threshold of hearing. So the bell rating becomes six, the exponent on 10, and the decibel rating is 10 times that value. It's 60 decibels. Let's do one last row. Busy street traffic, 10 to the seventh times more intense. Take the exponent on the 10, the 7, that becomes the bell rating, and then the decibel rating is 70 decibels. I'll do the rest of the table here. I'll just show you the results. Here they are. Now what you'll notice is that the decibel rating is a power of 10 or logarithmic base rating that compares one sound's intensity to the threshold of hearing and does it in terms of power of 10.
The decibel scale is a logarithmic scale based upon powers of 10 that allows me to compare the intensity of sound A to the intensity of a second sound, usually the threshold of hearing. But it doesn't have to be the threshold of hearing. Using decibels, you can compare the intensity of any two sounds if you know their decibel ratings. As an illustration, let's consider the first of two examples. How many times more intense is an 80 decibel sound than a 40 decibel sound? My solution begins by converting the 40 and the 80 decibels to bells using the fact that deci means one-tenth. So 40 decibels or 40 one-tenths of a bell is equal to four bells and 80 decibels is equal to eight bells. This means that the 40 decibel sound is 10 to the fourth times more intense than the threshold of hearing and the 80 decibel sound is 10 to the eight times more intense than the threshold of hearing. And so, the 80 decibel sound must be 10 to the fourth times more intense than the 40 decibel sound since it's four bells higher in its bell rating. Let's do the second of two examples. How many times more intense is a 90 decibel sound than a 30 decibel sound? Once more, my solution begins by converting the 30 and the 90 decibels to bells. 30 decibels is three bells and 90 decibels is nine bells, which means that the 30 decibel sound is 10 to the third times more intense than the threshold of hearing, and the 90 decibel sound is 10 to the ninth times more intense than the threshold of hearing. And so, we would notice since the 90 decibel sound is six bells higher, than the 30 decibel sound, it's 10 to the 6 times more intense than the 30 decibel sound. You'll note that if we know the decibel rating and want to compare the intensities of the corresponding sounds, then we simply take the difference in their bell rating and then we raise 10 to that power. And that tells me how many times more intense sound B is than sound A. So far, the numbers that I've given you for intensity have been in the form of 1.0 times 10 to some exponent. But it doesn't have to be that way. Like, what would you do if you had an intensity of 6.27 times 10 to the negative fifth watts per meter? Not 1.0, but 6.27. How would you find the decibel rating of that sound? Well, the answer is you would use the equation, of course, the one I haven't given you. This equation right here that says the decibel rating, dB, is equal to 10 times the log of the ratio of the I divided by I subscript O where I is the intensity of the sound you want to find the decibel rating of, and I subscript O is 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared, the threshold of hearing intensity. Here's how I suggest you use the equation. Begin by taking the ratio of I divided by I subscript O. Once you get that ratio in your calculator, take the log of that number, then finally multiply by 10. Let me illustrate by using 6.27 times 10 to the negative fifth as my value of I, I wish to find its decibel rating. So I begin by taking that value of I and divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 12. I end up getting 6.27 times 10 to the 7th. Now I'm going to take the log of that value. So make sure that number's on your calculator and then look for the log button and find the log of that number and you end up getting as a rounded number 7.80. Now 7.80 is what we call the bell rating. It's the log of the ratio of intensity values. Now what you want to do is convert from bells to decibels and that's where the times 10 comes in. So the decibel ends up being 10 times 7.80 or 78.0 decibels. An intense sound is perceived as a loud sound, but not equally loud to all individuals and not of the same loudness for all frequencies. Unlike intensity, loudness is a subjective quality that depends upon the hearing ability of the observer, but also upon the frequency of the sound itself. So we're going to discuss the effect of frequency upon the loudness of a sound. The plot here of decibel rating as a function of frequency is what we call an equal loudness plot. The curves on the plot are equal loudness curves. In order to illustrate how it works, let's take two points on the so-called 60 Fon line. So the red point that you see there marked is at a, the intersection of 60 decibels and 1000 hertz. And what I want to ask is what sound 
sound played at 100 hertz would sound equally loud as a 60 decibel sound played at 1000 hertz. And if I read off the graph, I notice the blue dot is right around 100 hertz and about 80 decibels. So this tells me that those two sounds would have equal loudness. That is, an 80 decibel sound played at 100 hertz would sound equally loud to a person as a 60 decibel sound at 1000 hertz. Let's do another example, this time using points on the so-called 40 fawn line. So the red dot there is at 40 decibels and 1000 hertz. And I want to ask, what sound played at 200 hertz would have the same loudness to me as this so-called 40 decibel sound at 1000 hertz. So if I read the value of decibels for the blue dot, which is placed at 200 hertz, I would be getting a value just a little bit above 50. So I could say that 50 decibels at 200 hertz would sound equally loud as 40 decibels at 1000 hertz. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. The top two, the Minds on Physics mission and the Concept Builder, will be great practice with the conceptual side of intensity and depth. Decibels. If you need to practice the math crunching side, you use the calculator pad. And finally, if you need to freshen up on the topic, use our tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.